Hey guys, Dastro here. Another video, but this is a bit different. This is a instructional video that I'm doing to give you guys an idea of how I go about creating multi-perspective game commentaries. These are commentaries in which I take multiple video clips from multiple perspectives of a given match or scrimmage, and I seemingly create a commentary going from one perspective to the other uh, without actually having a spectator mode or battle recorder in Battlefield 3. Now this applies to ju not just Battlefield 3, but it applies to a variety of other games that don't have a spectator mode or battle recorder. And I want to go over this because a few people have asked about it, including some uh, of my YouTube content creator friends, and I decided I want to make this video to try to show my method. It's just a method. I'm no computer programmer, I'm no engineer. I'm, I just sort of cobbled this all together uh, in an attempt to make it easier for me to create this footage. And what am I talking about? Well, let's, you know, sh real quickly look at a clip of, of what I'm talking about. Here we go. Oh, he starts peeking there and he gets one kill. Oh, he gets one kill. Got one down hookah. Three more hookah. Get some, throw some grenades. Steeler Town is going to push him up though. He's still going to get up. And Steeler Town gets back. one. Go and There's that's it. He gets way. one. No. Side good counter push by UXP on that one. Yeah, one 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 side, one side, one the right. Going to the quad cam. Quad cam. I'm down, dude. It's not like quad cam, it's just uh, three cams. In. Okay, in that clip, I went from one person's perspective to another person's perspective, all while giving commentary at the same time. Now, how do we go about creating that if we didn't have any special tools? Well, we basically have two options. We can take multiple perspectives, we can download them from YouTube or take them from the individuals that give it to you directly into you know, multiple video files. We can then uh, take all those video files and put them all up in Adobe Premiere or Sony Vegas, whatever we're using, and then we can sync them up and so uh, when you play the given file, all two, three, four perspectives are all playing at the same time. At the, at the correct time span, stamp, so when uh, the match counts down to zero and it starts, everyone starts. There's no one guy who's 10 seconds ahead because we didn't sync up the times. Once we do that, we then uh, can begin the arduous and tedious process of cutting the clips by watching all four and saying, okay, of these four perspectives, this guy during this point of time has the best perspective. I'm going to delete everyone else's clips. And I'm going to leave just that guy's clip for that duration of time, 40 seconds, whatever. And we keep on doing that for the entirety of the match, 20-minute match. You may have 40, 50, 60, 80 different clips all in front of each other, back and forth, uh, from different perspectives so that you can have that really cool action sequence. And what happens when you get done with that? When you get done with that, you can encode that video. And from there, you can begin to give the commentary. Because you've edited it just the way you'd like it. And so you can watch that video a few times, or just do, do it once and record live. And you can put your commentary over it, talking over it, just like I'm talking over this video right now. And then... You can re-encode it again and then publish it and you're good to go. What's the other way of doing it? Well, the other way of doing it is you can watch all four perspectives and then you can give the commentary first. And then once you give that commentary, all 15 minutes of it, you can then cut all those four video clips into one sequence in which it matches what you're saying at any given time. Now, both of these options are incredibly time intensive. Why is that? Well, it's just syncing up the, the clips is pretty easy. But, but mainly cutting each one, especially if there's a lot of action in multiple spots on the map, is very, very difficult because you're going to have to watch basically all four independently. Or you could do a quad uh, perspective like I do. And let's actually go to a clip and watch this while I'm talking. Of, of We watch all four and say, well, I want to go to the, the fir this first guys in the first quadrant, and then I'm going to go to the fourth quadrant guy, and then I want to stay in the, qu in, the, in the quad cam and show that. And we do that, and it, it, it's very time intensive. So you may wa have a 15 minute match, but it may take you an hour, two, three hours in order to get the clips just right, just right. And then you have to do the commentary, and and then there's all the encoding in the middle. It's really quite uh, difficult. And to create a 15 minutes worth of footage, it may take you a long time to do it. And the first time that I tried to do it, I got fed up. And for me, 
whenever I uh, try to do something that I think shouldn't take that long and I, I feel like or I think that there may be a solution out there, I, I, I basically drop it and start trying to figure out a solution. And that's what I did in this situation. And instead of going the sort of cut and commentate option or the commentate then cut option, we have the dascro option, the dascro method. How does my method operate? Well, it's pretty simple. But before I go into it, we have to talk about the basics of how Adobe Premiere works. I use Adobe Premiere, and so this is so some real basics about Adobe Premiere. Adobe Premiere is a video editing program. You have multiple video and audio channels in this bottom right section where you can add in video clips to a given video sequence. The video sequence is essentially your, your, your canvas. It, it's the end product. The video clips are just the individual clips that you want to throw into it. You can throw multiple clips on them. And there's really two, there's, there's an aspect to this that's very important to differentiate because I'm going to be talking a lot about this. There's essentially two different timings taking place in your video sequence, in your canvas. You have the, your sort of start to finish. And so you push that play button and it starts at the beginning and it plays all the way to the end. And you have a certain duration of time in that. But each individual video clip that you put in there is going to have a timing as it relates to the video sequence. And so if I put a, uh, a, a clip right in the middle of a, of a four minute video, I put it at that two minute mark, it's going to be at that two minute mark. It's going to start showing that clip when I'm two minutes into this video sequence. However, that video clip also has its own timing that is, that is completely independent of the video sequence. It is a timing of that video clip itself. And so I can take a, uh, a one minute video clip and I can put it at the two minute mark of a four minute video sequence. And uh, it knows that even though that when the video sequence is at two minutes, it's gonna start at the very beginning of that video clip unless I edit it otherwise. So let's just keep that in mind. When we save these files in Premiere, they can save in a lot of different formats. But there's one format in particular that I want to mention. It's the EDL format. EDL format is a generic format that Adobe Premiere uses and a few other applications use as well. But the most important thing to remember about the EDL format is it is a plain text format. Plain text format means that I can go into it using Notepad or, or other application and I can manually edit the actual sequence that I create in Premiere based on those video clips. And it's real basic stuff. It's basically an order of video clips that go one after another in a given period of time. And so given that last example I talked about, it would basically say, put the first clip two minutes in and have, it start, have that video clip start at its beginning of that clip itself and then have it run its course. And that's what the EDO file would say in plain text. It's pretty, I mean, you can look at it and, and, and see, oh, that's what it's going to be doing. It's not, it's not uh, in some kind of archaic programming language. It's almost like a CSV file in that respect, a comma separated values. So why is that important to know about? Well, let's talk about what I want to try to accomplish here. I want to create a, a method in which I can watch uh, a quad cam or however many perspectives that I'm doing and then while I'm giving the commentary while I'm watching it I want to I want the computer to be able to know which perspective I'm actually commentating on at that given point in time and so if I'm looking at that top left quadrant I want to show the viewers you guys just that top left quadrant or if I want to show the bottom right quadrant I want to show the whole thing I want the computer to know which perspective I'm talking about and so what I created was a small application. Uh, application is not even the right word. It's a, it's a macro. It's a little script using AutoHotKey. For those who don't know AutoHotKey, AutoHotKey is a basic macro editor that a lot of people use in World of Warcraft and things like that. Uh, you basically can create very simple key macros. And here's what I did. I did something very simple. I said, okay, whenever I want to see a given perspective, let's just say I'm using a quad perspective like we see right now, and I want to go from... Uh, I want to show the first perspective, and then I want to show the fourth perspective, and then I want to show the quad perspective. Three different perspectives over a course of time. I have five buttons set up on my keyboard, and you can actually hear me cl the clicking during some of these commentaries. And so I'll, I'll start talking, watch that quad commentary, have the auto hotkey hot record. I'll push one, the, 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 my, my first button, it'll go to that first quadrant. I push my number four button, it goes to the fourth quadrant, and then I push the five button to go to the quad cam. And it's recorded all those keystrokes. It records really three things. It records uh, what 
what uh, position I want to look at, what video sequence I want to look at, one, it records when I actually push that button in real time. And so if it's 2 o'clock in the morning uh, exactly, and I push that button at 2 o'clock in the morning, it's going to record that I push that button at 2 o'clock in the morning. And then lastly, it records in what order I push the buttons. And so the first button I hit was number one, the second button I hit was number four, the third button I hit was number five. It records all that in real time and saves it to a text file. Once it saves to a text file, that's where the magic starts to happen. So I'm, I'm, I basically do the whole recording. And to give you perspective of how many uh, times I transition from one perspective to another, in a 15 minute video, 15 minute uh, round or match, in a given uh, Battlefield 3 game, I'm transitioning 70 to 100 times. Can you imagine manually editing four different clips each time back and forth so that uh, over a 15 minute period, you're, you're basically cutting and pasting it 70 to 100 times? That takes a lot of time. I don't wanna do that. That's where this text file comes into play. I take this text file, which as you can see here is basically just a list of, of me hitting buttons. That's all it is. I take that, I copy it, and I put it into a little Excel file that I created, which has a little macro, which the first thing it does is that I, I simply uh, edit it so it's in a format that I can start to manipulate it with, and then I begin to synchronize or zero out the time that ha is recorded within that sequence. Because the computer the computer doesn't know that when I when I hit it at 2 a.m. that I really meant to hit it re relative to the actual video sequence itself at the zero second, zero minute, you know, at the start of the clip. I have to I have to resync it, and that's what I end up doing with this this Excel file. Is it resyncs it so the time code is relative to the video sequence. From there, I I only need to uh, to do a little bit of editing here and there to get the the uh, list into a format that I can then export out of Excel. I open up Notepad++, I convert it, convert it uh, from a CSV file from Excel into an EDL file, and once I have that, that EDL file, this is where it gets really cool. I can take that EDL file, I can import it into Premiere. It takes a bit to, to uh, be imported, but once it gets imported, I can then uh, assign the a, each given sequence to its actual video clip that I was basing it off of, and this is where it gets really, it also gets really cool. It maintains the original file format of each of those given clips, and so if I have four 1080p clips, it's going to maintain 1080p for each of those given clips, as opposed to. Uh, to taking a, a one fourth of 1080p if they're in a quad, you know, perspective. Once I do that, I'm in great shape. I now have this this 15, 20 minute sequence of of, of almost a hundred different transitions, and I can then just take my commentary that I recorded and webcammed and just plop it on top of it, sync it up, which is really easy because you can just sync up based on on the keystrokes, and you're good to go. And so I, by using this method, I'm able to save probably two or three hours worth of time. And that's very, very helpful. Now, if I was, if I was only had like five or six transitions, you could do it manually. But when, you, when I'm doing like 30, 40, 45 minute long uh, match commentaries, I, I, get, to al I get to almost, almost 500 transitions. It's crazy. Now, one of the nice things about this is that just like the manual method of cut and commentate or commentate and cut, I can I can edit out some of the I can manually edit some of the, the the video clips and say, well, I didn't mean to actually show this given clip at this point. What I really meant to do is show another clip, and I can actually move and manipulate the clips on an ad hoc basis and actually edit it so it's to my liking. I then take that commentary and put it on, as I said before, and then I, I re-encode and I'm good to go. That's sort of the concept behind it. Now, some of you may say, well, Dastro, there's probably some other methods that you could utilize. So, for instance, you could play your quad video, your quad perspective in Twitch, or not Twitch, in uh, XSplit, which is a program I'm using right now, and then do the commentary on that, have your webcam in the top left, or whatever it is, do uh, encode that 
exploit at 1080p and you're good to go. But take consideration that at 1080p, it's going to record each of the individual perspectives at what, 260, 270p? That's one fourth of 1080p. If, if I want to upload this to YouTube at 1080p and I go to that individual perspective, even though that, that the uh, XSplit may be looking at that one individual perspective, it's still going to be in really low resolution. I don't want that. It's just not, it's not that good of a setup. Now, what's really cool about this given you know method I created is that I actually originally created it not for YouTube videos. I created it for live streaming. And it works very similarly. The idea is, is that you'd have four 720p live streams up simultaneously. And with all four of them up, and I'm running a, a triple monitor setup right now, but even a dual monitor setup, you could do it. You basically have four monitors set, four different uh, 720p streams set up. And this auto hotkey function basically did two things, or three things. The first thing that it did was it, it, it changed the, the scene and XSplit to that given perspective. It's just a window going from one windowed 720p screen to the other one. But what it also did, and this is a two-part process, was that it, it very, very quickly, because you can set timings very fast with, it, with, this, with this macro creator, it muted all of the perspectives, all four that I had up there. And then from there, it unmuted the one that I wanted to show. That way, it actually had to sit, not only the video in 720p, but also had the audio. And by doing that, it I was able to seamlessly transition from one perspective to another while they were playing live, while I was commentating at the same time. And it really, I mean, it's what I'm describing really isn't that much different than being in a control room at a TV station. You got multiple monitors all set up, and you're just pushing buttons, going from one perspective to the other. A TV producer's kind of kind of job, that kind of thing. But that's sort of the idea of of of, of how I do the videos that I do. I'm not saying this is the best method. In fact, I'd love to, to hear you guys, what you guys think about this. If there's any easier, easier ways that I could do this. I'm not attached to this method that I created. Not at all. If there's an easier way of doing it, I'm going to do it. So if you have any suggestions of how I could do this differently, uh, be sure to let me know. Hope you guys enjoyed this. I know this is way different and it's a little long, but nonetheless, though, hopefully you guys learned a little bit, and uh, I'll see you guys later.